Hey kids, welcome to a lesson 10, building an app, Color Sleuth number 13. Next step, update the UI to show the score. This is what I've been waiting for. This is pretty easy at this point. There are UI text label for the player score called score one label and score two label. Add set text statements at the end of the function, either place to console.log statements or just add them after. The label for your player one should look like this. And we have a little example of what we're gonna put in there. After that, test it out. After reading these set text statements, you should see the score being updated with each click. Look at the animation over there. You can actually play the game a little bit now. What it looks like we're doing is we are now taking that information we're getting. Right now, we're just setting it to our console.log but now we're gonna update it to this UI element here. Well, where are we gonna do that at? Well, the best place to do this is to probably look at where we're outputting it out at. So if you look down here in my score update, glad I commented this out because it was really easy to find, you'll see I'm pretty much outputting P1 score and P2 score. And really what I wanna do is I wanna get this text here and put it over at the label. How do we do that? Well, that's the set text function. So I'm just gonna put set text and we're gonna get it from score one label. And what's that going to be? P1 score. Don't need any um, quotes on the P1 score. Make sure you have them around your score label though. And a semicolon at the end. Just to drag one in to show you what we are dealing with, remember the first one is the ID. The ID is score two label in this one. And what are we setting it to? Well, we're setting it to P2 score. I'm getting a little error here. What's the error? Well, just forgot to camel case my second word, first letter. Remember, camel case, if you're gonna do it that way, you have to repeat it all the way through. That looks like all I really had to do. Now when I hit run, I should see the same score updated in this debug console as I do over here in my UI elements. And UI elements should switch this gray box to which player should be picking. Let's go ahead and test this out. We hit run. The proper one here looks like quadrant four, so I click on it. Oh, we got an error here. Let's take a look at what is going on. What's our error here? Well, looking back down here, I can see one is a period. It should be a comma. Super simple mistake. I make this all the time. I'm not looking. I hit the little period button instead of the comma button because they're right next to each other and my big sausage fingers hit everything. So it's a common thing to do. Really hard to see because at least on my screen, that little comma looks just like a period. So again, super simple mistake and that gave us a big long warning string. Let's reset and run though and see if it works any better. So this one looks like it should be one. We updated player score one update a player score two, and it looks like player two is still going. So we are going to pick again, and then pick again, pick again, and it looks like player two is going twice. Hmm, I wonder why that is. It looks like our code is running. If you do not get it right, you get to keep clicking. So our code is working as intended. We just have to remember how we wrote it out. That if it's right, then we switch. Otherwise, the player keeps selecting. That's why these little boxes are so important here. Well, it looks like we got our code running exactly like we wanted it to. Looking back up here, we added our set text. Our score does update in our two boxes here and everything flips back and forth. Looks pretty good to me. I think that's all code.org wanted. Let's hit finish and see if they want anything else. No. 
Good job, kids. I'll see you on the next lesson.